Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about the way in which a fungal pathogen known as Histoplasma capsulatum causes infection in human hosts. So first let's talk about where it comes from. It is in a mold form when it's found in the environment. And so this is kind of what the mold form looks like. It produces a few different kinds of spores for reproduction in the environment. So there are microconidia, which are these small ones, and macroconidia, which are the larger ones. And in particular, it's found in soil that has been contaminated by droppings from birds and bats. And so how does it get into humans? Well, when humans encounter soil that's been contaminated by these droppings, if they disturb the soil, for example, perhaps they are in a cave with a lot of bats and they're disturbing the guano that builds up, those bat droppings, um, or if they're doing sort of um, farming type activities, anything that might disturb the soil, that will result in these different kinds of spores becoming aerosolized. And then they can actually be inhaled by the human who disturbed the soil. Um, and in particular, it's these, these microconidia, which are, are most likely to be inhaled this way. So they get inhaled, they enter the human body into the lungs, um, and there's not actually any reproduction of this fungus inside the human body, usually. However, the warmer temperature in the lungs causes all of the spores that are inhaled to transform into a different sort of phenotypic uh, life stage of the fungus known as yeasts. Um, so into yeast or budding yeast cells, so no longer this mold form, but this sort of unicellular yeast form instead. And the yeasts then get phagocytosed. Now during this initial um, sort of period of infection, there are some symptoms that are similar to flu or tuberculosis, sort of serious respiratory type uh, symptoms. Now, a phagocytosis is when cells from the immune system engulf the yeast cells in order to degrade them and get rid of them. Unfortunately, it tends to not work out so well. These phagocytic cells can't really handle the yeast so much, um, and they end up, the yeast cells end up traveling through phagocytes um, throughout the entire body, so it becomes very disseminated through the body, and they're traveling via the bloodstream. And in particular, they're traveling in the blood to lymph nodes and to the rest of the body. And what ends up happening is we get later symptoms of inflammation of the entire chest cavity from this infection, as well as enlargement of the spleen and swelling of the lymph nodes. And this is because these phagocytes are kind of clogging up the lymph nodes, causing them to swell, um, being filtered out by the spleen, which really can't... Um, get rid of them very well, and that causes the spleen to be quite enlarged. Uh, and so these are sort of later symptoms of the infection caused by histoplasma capsulatum, which is called histoplasmosis. And it can be fatal if it's not treated. Luckily, there are some various types of antifungal drugs that one can take in order to treat an infection um, and that histoplasmosis disease. And so this is how uh, histoplasma capsulatum causes infection in human hosts. If you're interested in some other pathogen life cycles, see my playlist on pathogen life cycles. Um, these will include things like the hookworm and schistosomiasis uh, life cycles. Um, you can also check out my video on introduction to fungal pathogens to learn more about other types of fungi that cause disease in humans. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.